I drive because I love my children on the bus. I started off driving to be at home with my children on snow days and holidays. And in that 24 year time that I've been with the county, I have enjoyed every child on my bus and the families and the con connections I've met. Why do I drive? I drive because of the students. It's them, it's those, those students that make me make my day. You make relationship with these students and even after they graduate from high school, they'll come up and give you a hug and let you know that they appreciate you and what you did. I love driving a school bus because I had a school bus driver that I admired and I always watched her and she was a great person and I, that challenged me to be a good bus driver. And I was a trainer for two years for Roanoke County and I loved it. I enjoyed showing people what I do. This is a family. Uh, we consider ourselves part of the transportation family and once you become part of the family, you stay part of the family. Uh, we learn about each other's family, we support each other, uh, we're there for each other, and we have fun while we're doing it. Uh, we get to help the students, uh, we get to be there for them and support them.
went around the back way. What? Cindy showed me a back way to get around. There's one in the hall. All right. Um, thanks for your patience as we uh, just got out of closed. So, uh, Mr. Linden, if uh, you could 2.02, if you could uh, read us out of closed, please. Yes, Mr. Chairman. I move that the Roanoke County School Board come out of closed session for the following. To discuss ongoing personnel matters under investigation pursuant to the personnel exemption at 2.2-3711A1 of the Code of Virginia and for consultation with legal counsel and briefing by staff members pertaining to actual or probable litigation and consultation with legal counsel regarding specific legal matters requiring the provision of legal advice by such counsel pursuant to 2.2-3711A7 of the Code of Virginia. And I also move to certify that to the best of each member's knowledge, only public business matters lawfully exempted from open meeting requirements under this chapter and only such public business matters as were identified in the motion by which the closed meeting was convened were heard, discussed, or considered in the meeting by the school board. Okay. Second. Madam Clerk. Mr. Butzer. Yes. Mr. Linden. Yes, ma'am. Mr. Greenway. Mr. Ray. Yes. Mr. Martin. Yes, ma'am. All right. We had no action from closed session, so uh, if you all could please. I want to welcome everyone to the meeting um, at this point in time. If we can stand for the pledge. I pledge allegiance to the flag of the United States of America and to the republic for which it stands, one nation, under God, indivisible, with liberty and justice for all. That's all right. <laughs> all right. Item 4.0, announcement of changes in the agenda. No sure. changes? Okay. Uh, Motion to approve the agenda. Perfect. The second. Second. Madam Clerk. Mr. Butzer. Yes. Mr. Linden. Yes, ma'am. Mr. Greenway. Mr. Ray. Yes, ma'am. Mr. Moran. Yes, ma'am. All right. Uh, item 5.01 under presentations and recognition. We have recognition of 2020-2021 VMSA Master in the Middle Teacher of the Year, Ms. Sarah Bear, Hidden Valley Middle School, and Mr. Riley is here. Well, good evening, Mr. Chairman, members of the board, Dr. Nicely. On March 22nd, the Virginia Middle School Association Board of Directors announced that Ms. Sarah Bear was the winner of the 2020-21 Master in the Middle Teacher of the Year Award, which honors a nominated middle-level teacher who has demonstrated a devotion to teaching young adolescents and a commitment to the best middle-level practices. Mrs. Bear is a 16-year veteran middle school math teacher. She brings excitement to every lesson she teaches. She loves working with 7th graders and is intentional in creating a warm and inviting classroom in which her students can flourish. Her UB Bear metacognitive strategy helps students understand how they learn, identifies their gaps, and provides a roadmap which allows students to take ownership of their own learning. In Ms. Bear's classroom, students actively encourage each other in their academic pursuits, including through a clap-down routine that unifies the students as they celebrate each other's success. Ms. Bear contributes to the professional development of her colleagues by welcoming visitors to her class and enthusiastically sharing ideas. In a Roanoke Times letter to the editor, a former student, Alec Dalton, wrote, As a former student of hers, I would like to congratulate her on this incredible honor. Mrs. Bayer's dedication and teaching style makes a profound impact on the lives of her students, and I believe that she provides exactly the type of classroom environment that students will need as they make the transition back to in-person instruction. And I certainly could not agree more. So it's with great honor that I present to you Ms. Sarah Bayer, the Virginia Middle School Association's 2001, 2021 Master in the Middle Teacher of the Year. I just wanted to say thank you for your recognition. I'm a proud employee, graduate, and mom of Roanoke County <laughs> students. So thank you very, very much.
think she has three here. The three. daughter's hers. Yeah. Well, He's oh, looking the wrong way. I'll step out. He knows. He likes that camera. Right. All right. Item 5.02, recognition of Cave Spring High School 2021 competition cheer, state runner-up, Mr. Steve Spangler and Ms. Jen Cole. Welcome, Mr. Spangler. Well, thank you. Thank you for having us this evening. Uh, wow. What a, what a journey this crew has had to get where they are again. So I have a lock on the region. You know, I, me I mentioned this when we were here before, the, the dynasty that Jen has built with her coaches and the kids and the dedication, the athleticism that they, that they have. What a bunch of hard workers, and they had they had some 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 things they had to go through this year uh, with the COVID protocols and splitting the groups and the long hours and a, and a lot of hard work. But I will tell you that this uh, this group really really shined in the state final. I know they're disappointed. I am so proud of them, but I mean they were flawless. I mean, I, I don't judge. I don't know a whole lot about <laughs> all the fine points, but I do know when so they, they were snapped robbed. to think they were they, they, they were perfect. They were they were they were really working well. Miss Ray can uh, he'll attest to that. So we we enjoyed watching that and couldn't be prouder. And I'm going to turn this over to Coach Cole. She can introduce her coaches and her team. Thank you. And away. I, w I did not know I was speaking, so forgive me if I'm a little all over the place. But thank you guys for having us tonight. I know you've heard this voice probably more times than you wanted to this year, but we appreciate you guys taking the time to recognize this team and our coaches. Um, you know, like Mr. Spangler said, and we want to thank our administration too because they backed us every moment of the way that we had. We battled for space. We used rooms in the school that we have never even set foot in. Um, before and had to split up our girls and boy unexpectedly and our kids rolled with it they believe in the process and they trusted us through it and we're we're proud to say that um, in our division alone there are 54 teams total and only four had the chance and the opportunity to advance to the state final this year so to be one of the four in the entire state is a huge accomplishment and to finish in the top two is even more amazing so um, it's their eighth consecutive year doing so. So I will take the time to introduce them. I will screenshot their roster real quick. <laughs> <laughs> um, and I know we're missing quite a few. We have uh, some spring sports and some job conflicts, but majority of them are here. So um, first I'd like to recognize Haley Adams. Yeah, sure. 
Beautiful. Thank you. And we have Graylin Askew. We have senior Emily Cleveland. Danny Densmore. Senior Aiden Doyle. Maggie Fields. Senior Lily Fox. Lauren Fredette. Carly Gaylor. CJ Graham. Sierra Hartman. Abby Holbrook. Senior Kate Manico. Samantha Manico. Caroline Mills. Amber Mullins. Just a handful left, I promise. <laughs> Berkeley Nichols. Reagan Shively, Emily Vieska, Eliza Dimichowski, I still don't know how to say that right, it's a tricky one, Kirsten McKinney, Amalia Midkiff, and McKenna Poe. And our coaching staff is myself, Jen Cole, and then I have with me Katie Lineback. And Taryn Mabry and Kayla Carver, who is actually one of our athletes, now coach. So that's pretty cool for us. So as you can see, our numbers really did not suffer this year. These kids were bound and determined and didn't let anything get in their way. So, um, again, thank you all so much for having us and, you know, hearing me out at the beginning of this wild ride and taking the time to listen to what these kids had to say because my voice was not alone. Trust me, they were fighting for themselves just as hard for this season. So um, really proud of you guys, and thank you guys. Thank you, Mr. Chairman and Jen. Don't run off. No, we uh, certainly, you know, I did a video, and you probably saw the video before you went. You know, I said the girls and the guy. So I was uh, <laughs> trying, and it was amazing that day and how technical it is. I mean, it, if you are in set and you move a finger, they count against it. I mean, it is that technical. I mean, I, it was just amazing. And what you did, you were perfect. I didn't see anything. You were number one, and that, my opinion, just like uh, Mr. Spangler. But, you know, it's a phenomenal that, uh, you know, Jen and you and Katie and the rest of your team, coaches, you know, you've been coaching 11 years. You've been attending the States 11 years. And, you know, I said this at a previous board meeting, and after I got back from the uh, competition at William Fleming, and you've been in the top two positions in the state now, eight consecutive years in the top two spots, and you have actually won it. Yeah, three years, and then uh, four years, you've been runner-up. So it's amazing the dedication that you girls and guy have. I mean, it just it doesn't come easy. And this is precision. Everybody has to be perfect. One little slip, and that's it. And you, you, you were perfect. And, um, you know, I went out of there saying, hmm, wrong team got it. But... Uh, <laughs> Uh, anyway, nothing to, uh, you know, y'all did great. We are so proud of you. Monroe County, here the board, we're very proud of what your accomplishments and the hard work that you have put in. And we, you know, we saw videos from everybody, and uh, we certainly uh, am glad that y'all were able to go and compete and continue this streak. So. Thank you, Jen. Thank you, uh, your coaching staff. Thank you, girls. Uh, we appreciate what you accomplished. Do you all want to get a picture?
Give them a chance to clear out. All right. Item 5.03, recognition of Northside Middle School teachers, Ms. Amber Benson and Ms. Ruby Voss, publication and association for middle level education, Mr. Paul Einberg. Welcome. Good evening. It's my pleasure to introduce to you uh, our dynamic math eight collaborative team at Northside Middle School, Ruby Voss and Amber Benson. Ruby is a special ed teacher, Amber is a math teacher. They recently in February had an article uh, published in the Association for Middle Level Education's magazine. And the title of the article is Semester Long Account Reconciliation Project Leads to Student Success. This is actually their second article in this magazine this school year. Uh, the article discusses their creative approach to teaching one of their standards, account reconciliation. Amber and Ruby's project engaged students in hands-on and real-life learning where they learned about balances, credits, debits, ending balances, and overdrafts. As always, if you read the article, Ms. Benson and Voss have the data to prove to you that the students learn better through their hands-on project than just some week-long lesson that they would create on something I would consider most middle school students aren't that interested in, and that's account reconciliation. But I want to add to the story with Ruby and Amber. Just last week, they received an email from the CEO of AAMLE. They have been invited to participate in a new initiative by AAMLE called Emerging Leaders. They will be part of AAMLE's featured speaker lineup at their national conference in Louisville this coming November which will allow them to speak to a much larger audience. They have presented AMLE before, but they're going to be featured speakers. AMLE is paying their registration and their ho uh, hotel accommodations. Uh, to summarize, Ruby and Amber, uh, well, look at their math shirts, first off. This is every day, <laughs> so that will tell you a story about them. They use two true data-driven instruction. They know how to differentiate instruction to meet the diverse le learning needs of their students. Their lessons are creative, they're hands-on, and they give students real-life lessons. They are wonderful with technology. They have produced hundreds, it might be in the thousands now, YouTube videos, YouTube instructional videos to support learning. They also created Blackboard lessons this past summer for students across the county to use during the school year. They have endless amounts of energy that leads to high levels of student engagement. But what is most impressive about Ruby and Amber, they are tireless workers. They go to extraordinary means to build relationships with their students. They create a true family. And just to give you an example, I laugh at this story because I can imagine them doing it. Two years ago, they found out that a student liked to race dirt bikes. So they decided on a Saturday morning, and I'm not sure they knew where they were going, but they, drew, they drove somewhere in North Carolina <laughs> to watch this student race dirt bikes. I think y'all took your husbands with you too, right? Okay. okay. <laughs> That's just one example. If you walk into their classroom, the students love them. The students are going to high school. They come back uh, to see them. Um, I could read y'all kinds of data. The data is very clear with what they do in the classroom. The SOL data, very clear as to how effective uh, teachers they are in the classroom. So I'm very proud of Ruby and Amber uh, for being published in the magazine to presenting at the national conference this coming November and for all their efforts with our students at Northside Middle School. So Ruby and Amber. Thank you. 
Thanks, Amber and Ruby. Appreciate all you do. All right. Item 5.04, recognition of Virginia State Science and Engineering Fair winners. We have uh, Ms. Erin Barnett and Mr. Mark Libby. <laughs> Ron. <laughs> She's tough. Uh, All right, let's go. She's used to it. Let's go. Good evening, Dr. Nicely, Mr. Chairman, and members of the board. I'm here tonight with Mr. Mark Levy, director of the Roanoke Valley Governor School, to recognize Roanoke County students who won awards at the Virginia State Science and Engineering Fair this year. So first we have Emiliano Gonzalez. He attends William Byrd High School and Burton Center for Engineering. He won honorable mention in the material science category for his project entitled The Effect of Various Temperatures on the Growth and Piezoelectricity on Rochelle Salt Crystals. Congratulations, Emiliano. And Mr. Levy is going to announce the Governor School Roanoke County Student. Thank you so much for having me here this evening. I'm very uh, excited to be able to present these wonderful students. It was a great year for Roanoke County at the State of the Science Fair for sure. Uh, the first group we're going to recognize uh, from the Governor School is uh, with a uh, first place in animal science, uh, Alicia Carvalho and Lila Sophie. And they produced a uh, gel, a uh, hydrogel to clean up. Uh, pollution uh, to preserve zebrafish habitats using a 3D bioprinter, uh, which is uh, exceptional stuff. So, uh, congratulations to the two girls. If you want to do a little bit. Oh, I'm sorry. Yes. Uh, so, um, uh, Alicia's uh, Cave Spring High School and Hidden Valley High School for Lila. And the next project that we're going to recognize was second place in uh, cellular and molecular biology. And one of the great things about the Governor's School, of course, is we've got seven different school districts. And so this is a great example of that in that uh, Drivi Patel worked with a student from Franklin County on this project. And it's great the way that the students are able to work together. So uh, Drivi's from uh, Glenver uh, High School. And they used uh, CRISPR, uh, which if you're familiar, that's a genetic engineering technology, uh, to work with breast cancer cells in a cell culture uh, within our building. First time we've used that cell culture equipment in the school. So it's a, a really special project. Congratulations. And then we also had a third place in chemistry that uh, went to Rebecca Q and uh, her partner, Ainsley Robertson. So Ainsley's not here because of a soccer game, I think, is that it? Um, but uh, Rebecca's here and, you know, talk about rising star. So last night we had our senior recognition ceremony and out of the whole graduating class of 73 students across all seven districts, I had one student who had placed the state science fair more than once. And Rebecca has already done that as a 10th grader, which is tremendous. And she goes to William Byrd High School. And in their project, uh, they used a, a Kytosan uh, gel. It's a, a hydrogel that was able to clean up uh, uh, um, dyes from water samples, I believe it was. Yeah. And uh, just tremendous work and a really strong, promising future for her. So congratulations. <laughs> Ooh, 
That's a great, 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 great color. Yeah, absolutely. I wonder if it's a shame they can't be here, but. And so there were a few students who weren't able to attend, so I can get these certificates to them um, if you'd like, and I just want to make sure that you're aware. So there were two freshmen who placed at the State Fair, which is tremendously uncommon, uh, Carson Ray and uh, Daniel Hahn, both uh, Cave Spring uh, High School students uh, who placed second place in plant sciences, and also Abi Kari, who received honorable mention in biomedical sciences. He's from Hidden Valley High School. So uh, tremendous work by your students this year. We're very proud to have them and happy to serve them. And Thank you so much for recognizing them this evening. Thank you. Thank you. Mr. Ray? Mr. Levy? Before we run out, I was able to uh, be on the graduation last night or mm -hmm. listen to the graduation, and it was amazing. And I was very impressed that the students, the graduating seniors, have obtained $6 million in scholarships. Yes. And it's, you know, the governor school, and it draws from all uh, regions all around. But Reno County certainly is, is making a place there, and we certainly uh, you know, recognize these students for their accomplishment. You really work hard for these. It's not something that comes easy, and you all really do, and we really do deserve, and we really appreciate and want to honor and uh, let you know how much we appreciate you. But thank you, Mr. Levy. I know you do a great job over there at the Governor's School. And, uh, you know, it's amazing, these, these kids, what they come out and they go on to these other, to either universities or go to these fields, and they have this talent. So uh, we do appreciate everything that you do. Thank you, Mr. Ray. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you, you. you Ms. Barnett, also. Yes. Did you hear that? <laughs> All right. 5.05, recognition for National Nurses Day, uh, Dr. Stigall. And I, real quick, I would be remiss if I didn't uh, wish you a happy birthday. Oh, thank you. Oh, happy this birthday. is a great celebration. Shall we sing? Yes. Absolutely. You can. Nurses Day. You can sing. Let's come right here so we can get you in the camera. Hello. How are you? Okay, Mr. Chairman, members of the board, and Dr. Nicely, um, today is a big day because we have some heroes here to celebrate today. It's National Nurses Day. Um, before we get to them, um, what we're here for, I have a couple background people that I need to thank because we have been working hand-in-hand -hand with everybody here to get through this COVID adventure, and there's a couple people that we need to recognize that we haven't done so yet. One of them is Mr. Chuck Leinberger, who has been right there with us every step of the way, robocalls, helping keep the data on the, on the spreadsheet and helping us with that. We also have... Um, um, uh, Cammie Williams, she is our supervisor of world languages, and she has translated every single letter in every language specific to each school. Sometimes that's eight letters per school every single time there's been a positive case. So I just think you need to know that that was happening late evenings, all weekend, every holiday. These people were behind the scenes helping us get that, that, that information out. And then we have Tina Turner, who is a supervisor of student services. She, at the height of COVID, kept a spreadsheet that took four hours a day to complete. So the nurses here were submitting that information. Charlene was handling all that information. It went into a spreadsheet. And so there were lots of people that supported this effort throughout this year. Um, the next person I want to recognize is, is Charlene Vale. She is a coordinator of health services. <laughs> superhero of a partner through this um, and I couldn't have asked for a better person to walk with me through this adventure. Um, she's got a powerful group of people here behind her and we can't say enough about it. I truly don't know how we would have gotten through this year without you guys. 
The great thing about it is we, we have gone through lots of hurdles. We continue to go through hurdles every single day. Uh, we keep thinking we're getting to the end, and then another hurdle pops in front of us. Just for example, today we sent out links for 12 and up to register, and the links had all kinds of questions that the links previous links didn't have, so they were getting all the phone calls. They've had some probably unpleasant conversations with parents. They've taken the brunt of the COVID battle. So I just want to thank them for everything they've done because it has been exceptional. Also, when we went to the COVID vaccination site at Northside and at William Bird, lots of them volunteered. They came with smiles on their faces. They were upbeat and positive, and they're always willing to do whatever we asked of them, and we asked a lot. So I want to thank you for being right there with us. So Charlene? Thank you. Mr. Chairman, school board members, Dr. Nicely, thank you for giving me a moment to speak. Um, first, I would like to thank the administration, especially Rhonda, because they have worked with us and supported us throughout this whole effort. I would also like to thank the school board for recognizing that we, um, the need that we had for full-time school nurses. Yesterday was School Nurse Appreciation Day, and I wanted to take a moment to celebrate and recognize the contributions to, that our school nurses are making to the health and learning of our students. The theme this year is championing the whole student and demonstrates the integral role that school nurses play, bridging health and education to improve each child's cognitive, physical, social, and emotional development. I think we can agree that our students are the future, and by investing in them today, we are ensuring our world for tomorrow. While students have the right to have their physical and mental health needs safely met at school, their families also des deserve to feel confident that their child will be cared for while at school. School nursing is a dynamic profession rooted in public health. Our school nurses serve a critical health hub, ensuring that students are ready for learning by managing complex chronic health conditions, handling emergencies, and identifying and addressing mental health issues. Our nurses act as a liaison to the school community, families, and healthcare providers on behalf of children's health by promoting wellness and improving health outcomes for our youth. This year has been especially challenging as we navigated through the pandemic. Our nurses spent countless hours contact tracing, advising families and staff regarding COVID-19, assisting in managing appropriate mitigation efforts, and, leading, and lending their expertise to help at vaccine clinics. For this reason, I wanted to take a moment to offer our gratitude to our school nurses for their hard work and dedication to helping our, keep our students healthy in school and ready to learn, and keeping parents and guardians at work, not just today, but every day. Thank you. Charlene, could, would you just take a moment and, and a brief introduction and in what school? For, I just, do you mind? Yeah, absolutely. I couldn't see you back there. <laughs> Thank you all. Thank all you. You. I know this is been a crazy you. year, so uh, I mean, yes, Mr. Wright. And, oh, sorry, Mr. Yeah, if, um, thank you, Mr. Chairman. Um, it was about six years ago uh, I sat down with Mrs. Lee to get an understanding of what a school nurse did every day, and uh, it was quite an education for me when I when I learned of all the things that you do every day, the medical procedures, the injections, uh, the paperwork, um, the nurturing, because as all the elementary school nurses know, you are their second mothers without, without a doubt. And so it, I was amazed at, at everything you did. But then this year happened and, and, and that was just exponentially more than it has ever been you flawlessly handled that. I mean, you you really saved a day, and uh, I really thank you from the bottom of my heart for all of the you've, you've done this year to keep our kids safe. Thank you. Thank you. Yeah, all of us. We got a picture. We can do a couple of rows. Yeah, 
What's next? There we go. Yeah. One, one sort of release. All right. Item 6.01, hearing of citizens and delegations. We have one tonight, Miss um, Patricia Stiles. So I'll just... Ms. Patricia Stiles. Uh, so I'll just, uh, um, when you get to the mic, if you could just state your name and your address, and I'll just always remind our speakers, you've got, uh, you've got three minutes. Okay. There's, you know, you've got your stoplight there, so you, okay. you can figure it out. So welcome. Thank you. Um, my name is Patricia Stiles. Um, currently, I live at 140 Mountaineer Road in Boone's Mill, Virginia, but I taught in Roanoke County for 35 years at Northside High School. Um, and I'm here to represent the retirees that, um, you know, have the early retirement plan. And um, I'll just tell you what I'm here for. I'm here to express my concern and the concern of several of my fellow retirees. Myself and several other retirees lost part of our contract days last year due to COVID-19. As part of my contract, I chose to fulfill my 32 days by working in testing and remediation as opposed to substitute teaching. We had hoped uh, that Roanoke County would let us make up these days, but unfortunately, Roanoke County Public School System has decided that these days are lost to us and will not be allowed to be made up. How can it be fair that some retirees who chose to complete their contract days early because they chose to substitute teach were paid their full compensation, whereas those of us who chose to wait until spring lost our days and thus lost the salary that some of us financially depend upon? Had those of us who lost our days known that COVID-19 was going to cause such turmoil, we would have finished our days before March, the March shutdown. Thank you for allowing me to express my opinion, and I hope that you will seriously reconsider your decision on this matter and allow us to regain the days we lost to no fault of our own. Thank you, Mrs. Stiles. Thank you. Thank, Thank you. Thank you for letting me speak. Yes, ma'am. Item 7.01, report by the Student Advisory Council and Senior Recognition. So we've got uh, Mr. Mark Linkus with us tonight and Ms. Chrissy Schleicher Maloney. Okay, Good time. evening. Cool. Good evening. How are you? I'm great. How are you? Great. Welcome. Good. Thank you. Um, so it is my honor and privilege each year to work with this outstanding group of students. And as all of you know, this is very much a student-run organization. So I'm actually going to turn things over to Cassidy Rye from William Byrd High School. Good evening, Mr. Chairman, members of the board, and Dr. Nicely. My name is Cassidy Rye, and I have the privilege of telling you a little bit about our senior class from the Student Advisory Council. As you know, the SAC serves as a bridge between the school board and the student body. Not only have these seniors done just that, they have done this successfully amidst a pandemic. These seniors have taken time to attend monthly meetings despite other commitments. They have made time to attend leadership conferences and sometimes even planning meetings. Many have been role models for their peers, which has left a lasting impact. These seniors have truly grown to be the best versions of themselves over the years as the SAC has helped them gain their voice, confidence, and skills that will last them a lifetime. To the seniors, you have a heart for change, and as a student who looks up to you, I'm excited to see how you will impact the world. Congratulations on everything you have accomplished in your time on the SAC and on your graduation. Let the time you have spent here help to guide, your, help to guide you in your steps and never lose sight of what you know you are capable of. Uh, hello, my name is Mark Linkus, uh, a senior at Glenver High School. Um, it's just been a great time in the SAC, and I plan to um, next year go to Regent University at Virginia Beach to pursue a degree, a Bachelor's of Arts degree in English history with a focus in U.S. history. And 
just during my time in the SAC, I've learned so much about being a leader. Uh, going into the SAC, I just thought that being a leader meant that you just took initiative all the time and that you had to just physically take charge all the time. However, uh, in my time in the SAC, just working with so many great uh, so many great students and so many of my peers, I've learned that uh, leading is all, also about uh, serving, and it's also about uh, coming together as a group and just uh, taking on some of the most important issues and just coming up with um, just different responses to those issues. And I just want to thank you, school board, for entrusting us with some of the biggest issues like bullying, substance abuse, and uh, students' mental health, and um, just allowing us to just um, speak directly to those issues. So, yeah, thank you. Hi, my name is Natalie Mullins. I'm a senior at William Bird High School. In the fall, I plan to attend Virginia Tech to major in journalism. And I've learned so many things during my time on SAC, but I have to say that my favorite part has been planning the um, leadership conferences each spring, because I just think it's very special to be able to serve the students that elected us onto this committee. Hi, I'm Suzanne Harris. Um, I'm a senior at Cave Spring, and next or this fall, I'm going to be swimming for James Madison University. Um, the biggest thing that I've taken away from being a member of the Student Advisory Council is also like Mark, which is leadership. And um, I've learned to lead in a way that people will want to follow um, and, and be a part of that. But I've also learned that the biggest part of leading is listening to those around you and understanding their opinions and almost being an advocate for those. So thank you, school board. Uh, good evening, Mr. Chairman, uh, members of the board, and Dr. Nicely. Uh, my name is Mark Linkus. I'm a senior at Glenver High School. So as you all know, the Student Advisory Council's most recent activity included hosting the annual RCPS Student Leadership Conference with the theme Above and Beyond um, on Wednesday, April 28th. Overall, the conference was a fun and engaging experience despite it being held virtually. Uh, students from all over the county and SAC, SAC members had the privilege of hearing from a community leader, uh, Beth Woodrum, founder of Chris's uh, Coffee and Custard in Roanoke, and about how she was able to begin her business that employs and trains young adults with special abilities during a pandemic. So a great feat right there and so glad that we were able to hear from her. Um, afterwards, participants were able to discuss um, the ways that their schools go above and beyond and the ways that schools can do even more. Uh, so many students discussed how their schools have done a great job when it comes to promoting school spirit and creating clubs. However, other students talked about how more can be done by creating opportunities for students to seek extra help in advanced courses by decreasing the number of SOLs and by increasing the number of events for students to engage in, such as hall decorating and competitions, um, such as uh, a larger variety of sports. Uh, last, uh, lastly, students were able to hear from our very own school board and Dr. Nicely. Uh, it was a great experience getting uh, to hear from you all about how you began your careers in education and why you all um, sought these careers in the first place. And um, I, I just can't thank you enough for the time you spent uh, just to come and talk to us students and to answer our questions during that time. So our final SAC meeting of the year will be held immediately after this uh, to talk about our thoughts about the council's activity this year and ideas for next year. Um, a senior representative for the 2021-2022 school year will be elected at this meeting as well. So um, as always, Mr. Chairman, members of the board, Dr. Nicely, uh, just thank you all so much for your continuous support of the SAC. Thank you. Good luck. Thank, thank you, Mark. Mark. Item 5.1. 
eight point um, or consent agenda. So I move that we approve item number eight. Go one through eight oh six. Second. Second. Okay. And I, I know we say this every time, but the consent agenda is something that we, you know, is presented to us, you know, either in a previous board meeting, uh, from an informational item, or something that we've thoroughly discussed in our work session, which, as you know now, uh, can all be viewed online. So, Madam Clerk, roll, please. Mr. Butzer? Yes. Mr. Linden? Yes, ma'am. Mr. Greenway? Yes, ma'am. Mr. Ray? Yeah. Mr. Moretz? Yes, ma'am. All right. So. Dr. Nice. Thank Dr. Nicely. You want to yeah, Mr. Chairman, a little we do bit have of news uh, some for us, sir. to make as a result of consent Absolutely. agenda. We've been saving up our introduction of our some of our new assistant principals appointed, also some deans of students. We're going to invite uh, Mr. Radishaw I'll just take a moment to introduce those to you, if you don't mind. Good evening, Mr. Chairman, board members, Dr. Nicely. We've got quite a crew coming in this evening. Uh, we're very excited. I'll have everybody let everybody get in the room. Uh, to introduce you to our newest administrative members uh, of our team. Uh, we've had a great year. I don't know if you want to call this a good draft year or what, but uh, we've certainly, we've done well this year, and we're really excited. So I think I've got everybody in here. So the first one I'm going to introduce you to are going to be my assistant principal, our assistant principals. Um, we're going to start at the high school level. So the first one is at Case Spring High School, and it's Mr. Brian Hall. Brian, if you want to just kind of step forward. Brian is currently the dean at Case Spring High School, so we're, we're keeping him right there. The next one we have is at Glenville High School, Mr. Tyler Brown. There we go, Mr. Tyler Brown. He's currently the dean slash athletic director slash do whatever, I think, at Glenville High School. Um, so we're really excited to have uh, Tyler join us as the assistant principal. Now we're going to move to the middle school. Hidden Valley Middle School is Evan Knoll. Evan is actually uh, currently the assistant principal at W.E. Cundiff. So Evan's going to be joining us at Hidden Valley Middle. William Bird Middle School is Jessica Yates. Jessica is uh, coming from us from Botetourt County. She's currently a teacher over there, so we're very excited to have her coming over here. The next ones are two elementary. At Glenville Elementary and Fort Lewis Elementary have Nina Rushing. Nina is currently a teacher at Botetourt County. You're going to see a trend here in these last three. And then the next assistant principal is at W.E. Cundiff, and it's Connor Hill, and she is also currently a teacher in Botetourt County. So... We are very excited to have this group behind me uh, as our new assistant principals in Roanoke County. Nice recruiting. Uh, thank you. Good job. Welcome, everybody. Look forward to it. The next group I'd like to introduce you to is our Dean of Students. Um, we have three of those. We have at Case Spring High School, Mr. Josh Knoll. Josh is currently the... Uh, Special Ed Coordinator at Hidden Valley High School. Next at Glenver High School is going to be Tammy Odom. Tammy is currently a Latin teacher at Glenver High School. And last but certainly not least is Ms. Crystal, Crystal Wagner. She's going to be at Hidden Valley High School, and Crystal is currently a Spanish teacher. Um, so our foreign language department, I know Dr. Oh. Nicey says they, you know, <laughs> It's a direct track into leadership, but uh, <laughs> uh, we're very excited to have these three join us as our deans. Excellent. Well, congratulations. So, Thanks, thank sir. you. Thanks again. Welcome, everybody. Look forward to seeing you all in your new role. Roles. All right. Uh, information agenda item 10.01. We've got requests to surplus vehicles and equipment. Mr. Lowe. Good evening, Mr. Chairman, members of the board, Dr. Nicely. Operations and Transportation Department are requesting permission uh, from the school board to surplus vehicles and equipment listed on the attached documents of your packet. If permission is received, the list will be published on the state surplus auction site and for the public to bid on. All proceeds from this auction will benefit the fleet replacement plan for Roanoke County Public Schools, and staff is prepared to have the auction take place in the month of June. We have four buses on this list, a couple Crown Vicks, an Oldsmobile Sierra, a Dodge Ram uh, 250, a couple Ford Tauruses, Crown Vic, um, 
a Chevy 2500 and two Caprices. Most of the vehicles are high mileage, uh, older vehicles, 20 plus years old. Um, some of them uh, do not run, most of them do not run, have transmission uh, issues, things like that. Uh, none of these uh, vehicles are in service right now. We've been using them for parts and, and replacement parts, things like that. Does the station wagon go yet? Not yet. Not yet. Okay. <laughs> They won't let that get. <laughs> That's, it's not even a touchable subject. <laughs> That's funny. All right. So, so these will be published on this uh, Virginia or, or this this uh, government website, and pictures will be available in descriptions. And then, if uh, if someone would like to call about information, there's there'll be a number available so they can call and schedule an appointment if they'd like to come see it, but prior to bidding. Gotcha. Okay. Thank you. So, I guess. Jump right into the next item, which is request for funding for maintenance department technology. So, as you remember from previous meetings uh, back in the, in the in the late winter, we were purchasing a new uh, maintenance uh, program called Asset Essentials for our maintenance tracking software. So, we've purchased that back in January. Uh, we've been training on it for the past few months, and we've been inventorying our product. So one of the things that is going to make this a lot better is to be able to utilize that product while we're actually in the field instead of the current situation right now where our maintenance staff has to come back to maintenance. They all log in on two or three different computers, get their work orders, and then go back out. It's very time consuming. It's very antiquated. Operations staff is requesting, and maintenance is requesting $20,000 from minor capital reserves in order to purchase 30 iPads and iPad protective cases for our maintenance employees. They'll be utilizing this technology in conjunction with the Asset Essential software. This technology is going to allow the maintenance staff to have immediate access to incoming work orders while they're on the job site, respond to site issues immediately, be able to take pictures and store them with each asset we have, have immediate access to existing and older building plans and systems while at the problem site, and we will also allow them to communicate ongoing efforts and solutions with supervisors and the school personnel. So imagine going to a job site for a work order, and all, they'll be able to hit on the, the Asset Essentials app on their iPad, and they're going to be able to pull up that ID of that, that, uh, that asset, that uh, cooling tower or whatever, and they're going to be able to see the history of that cooling tower. They're going to be able to look at past pictures. They're going to be, look at, they'll be able to look at past receipts for equipment that was purchased for that. It's all right there for them. They can fix the problem or order the part from that site and let the school personnel and the maintenance department supervisors know what's going on immediately right there with their iPad. And instead of going back to maintenance, pulling more work orders, they just go to the next work order. So it's, it's, going, to, um, it's going to be so much more efficient than the system we have right now. And this is just a, the, another leg in the step of, 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 of providing a more uh, efficient maintenance department. So we're asking for, for approval of $20,000 from Minor Capital so that we can do this, and then we will build any kind of replacements that we need to do in the future out of our maintenance budget. Perfect. Any questions? Thank you, Mr. Lowe. Thank you. All right, next item, 10.03, surplus request for retired technology equipment. Mr. Terry, welcome. Thank you, Mr. Chair, members of the board, Dr. Nicely. Moving from request for new technology to request to uh, retire some old technology. Uh, each year, uh, we request uh, re the retirement of aging technology equipment. This year, we have approximately 4,100 devices that consist of laptops, desktops, monitors, printers, mobile devices, and computer accessories. This equipment was previously assigned to administrators, students, and teachers. As part of the surplus process, the state contract vendor Powerhouse Recycling will ensure that proper data removal uh, and will allow for environmentally friendly destruction of all equipment. They will also pay us for the remaining residual value of the surplus equipment. As the uh, proceeds uh, of this residual value, they've been included in the FY22 budget as a funding source for the technology replacement plan. Staff recommends to surplus approximately 4,100 retired technology devices and prepare them for sale to the state contract vendor Powerhouse Recycling. Powerhouse will provide us with a proof of destruction document for all equipment. This includes erasing all data using the Department of Defense standards. Any questions? Questions? I just have one comment. So, you are amazing, and we tell you that 
never take it, but it's true. And so if you want to know where one of those devices are at, there's 84 pages that you can pull any, <laughs> any t device out of that and check and make sure. But uh, you've got it down to a science. It's, it's amazing. Thank well, and, and as I always will do, that's not me doing that. Well, that's sure. the tools that you guys have provided us, and that's our team that, that does that for us. Well, somebody has to lead that. You do a great job. I'll have to give Michael you credit for pulling either, that right? <laughs> No, I, I, I take all my, my lead from you guys. You do a great yeah, job. Yeah, Thank yeah. you. And just out of curiosity, what, what kind of reimbursement are we looking at? I um, had that question prepared as part of the, um, I guess, the reimbursement piece of for the, the FY22 budget is $94,000. Okay. So this is off-lease equipment, uh, and we're catching a, a decent break this year with COVID. Uh, there's still a pretty high residual value left in that equipment. Thank you. Good. Thanks, Jeff. Thanks, Jeff. Thank you. All right. Uh, 10.04, uh, Virginia Mathematics Pathway Initiative, Ms. Terry Hartley. So, so uh, Dr. Nice, we, we've had some questions from, you know, uh, parents, and I mean, I'm sure teachers have had questions, and you know, about this new uh, um, <laughs> mathematics pathway, pathway initiative. So uh, Ms. Hartley is here to kind of give us the, the 911 on that and maybe answer any questions that we have. Yes, so I'd, like to, I'd like to thank Dr. Nicely and uh, you, Mr. Chairman, and the rest of the board for letting me come and explain this to you. I think it'll be pretty painless, and I, I think you'll uh, have a better understanding after we're finished. Um, I'd like to um, have you look over at the PowerPoint. That will help you uh, move along with the information. Um, slide, please. Yeah, we'll go right in front of you. I do? Look in front of us. That's it right there. Is this it? Yep, forward. Ha! First try. <laughs> good job. Okay. It's a good it's guess. That was reasoning. It's the little things. It's the little things. That's right. Okay, the Virginia Mathematics Pathway Initiative, or the VMPI, is a joint initiative um, among the Virginia Department of Education, the State Council of Higher Ed for Virginia, and the, our Virginia Community College System. Um, this is an initiative that supports the profile of a graduate, as you already know, uh, preparing our students with the knowledge, skills, and experiences to become life ready, whether they're going to college or whether they're going to be going into the workforce or the military or into a trade. So what is the VMPI? It's a proposal right now. It's only a proposal to modernize and update our, our mathematics curriculum from grades K through 12. The uh, proposal will update the Virginia standards of learning and the divisions will be responsible for creating the courses that implement those new SOLs. We come up for new SOLs every seven years. The, the mathematics SOLs are up for revision in 2023 anyway. The divisions will have the flexibility to offer advanced sections of these courses. And the VMPI will also allow for student acceleration through the mathematics courses according to their ability and achievement. The traditional pathway leading to calculus or AP statistics will not be eliminated. The VMPI will also provide more opportunities for highly relevant math instruction that is going to be tailored to student-specific post-secondary needs, whether they're going to a two-year, four-year college, or a trade school, or the military, or career. So we're going to give them the math courses and the opportunities and the different options to get the math that they need in specific, for their specific pathway. There will be an increased emphasis on reading, reasoning, problem-solving, and statistical literacy. At the grades K through seven, they're gonna be calling those the foundational math concepts. The number and number sense, computation and estimation, measurement, geometry, probability and statistics, patterns, functions, and algebra is not changing. That is the same strands that we have right now. What will be changing is the way we're gonna be teaching those. We're gonna be using more inquiry-based, more engaging learning, more discovery learning. We're going to be building computational fluency instead of just rote memorization, and, and that's all. We will be building them with strategies of how to reach these uh, concepts. They're going to become knowers and doers of math instead of having math done at them. Okay? And, of course, we always want to include those authentic tasks for them to, to work on. At grades 8 through 10, this is where a lot of the, the big change is happening. 
We're calling those the essential math concepts. They're going to be blending Math 8, Algebra 1, Geometry, and Algebra 2 into a progression of connected learning. The content from these courses is not going to be eliminated. We're going to allow for a deeper examination of those essential math mathematics. They're going to investigate more data. They're going to have a greater emphasis on reasoning and problem solving, reasoning with geometric figures, modeling with functions, and making more sense of expressions, equations, and inequalities. So what that means is there's going to be more relevant teaching, more deeper learning. Instead of you know, a mile wide and an inch deep, we're going to be able to go deeper into those concepts. Another big change that they're going to be allowing us to do, and again, these are decisions that are made at the division level, we're going to be able to offer half credit or half, half year semester courses in data science, probability and statistics, geometry design, tri trigonometric applications, applications of advanced algebra, pre-calculus with a focus on functions, mathematical modeling, financial modeling, discrete mathematics for computing, and sets and logic. I find this part really exciting because we're going to be giving the kids a lot more options in their math courses from now on. At grades 11 through 12, we're going to be offering still the advanced math concepts that give them the one credit. And that sounds more like the traditional method that we, or the pathway that we have now. Quantitative reasoning, computer science, calculus and statistics, and associated with those would be the dual enrollment and the AP versions of those courses. Now, I prepared a, an example pathway that you could see um, for, say, for example, a middle school child who is one year advanced. In grade eight, and I just called it uh, Essential Concepts course. They haven't named these courses yet. I'm just calling it that. But so we have two students. One's college bound. Perhaps they're going into engineering. And another student is going to be uh, going to a two-year trade school or moving into manufacturing and building. They're both in eighth grade, and they're both going to be taking, say, for example, Advanced Essential Concepts course number one. Then they move on to grade nine, and they take course number two, again, the advanced version of that course. And then in grade 10, they can take course three of the Essential Concepts. Once they get into grade 11, the student that wants to major in engineering is going to be taking, perhaps, dual enrollment pre-calculus. The student who wants to go to the trade school now has an opportunity to take two different courses that might pertain to his or her field of choice. They might want to take geometry and design first semester and take financial modeling second semester. In grade 12, the engineering bound student would take AP Calculus AB and perhaps AP Statistics. The student that's going to be going to the trade school is probably going to be doing an internship, so they might not have time for math that first semester. Second semester, they would take data science for half a year. So that's just an example. There are uh, many, many pathways that we're going to be allowed to do for these kids to provide them with the mathematics that they're going to need. The timeline right now, uh, that we're in the developing the essential concepts courses right now. Um, and then next year, the revision committee is going to draft the 2023 math SOLs. In 22 to 23, the Board of Education will review those drafts. And then in 23, 24, there's going to be an approval to the VDOE to approve those math SOLs. And then in the years 24 to 25, we do the crosswalk year. And that crosswalk year is where we present the old and the new SOLs, the 2016 and the 2023 SOLs. And we teach them to the children in both. Uh, it's kind of a blended document that they give us. And then in 25-26 is when we would be full implementation with the new ones and with the new Essential Concepts courses. And I can provide you with this PowerPoint because this link is live. This is the link to the VDOE on the VP, VMPI website. Um, and if you have any other questions, you can go there. They have listed the previous and they will put the future presentations that they've been doing throughout the state on that website. They also have a link for a document that if you have any questions, you could submit on that link to the VDOE and they will get back to you with any questions that you have. The next live presentation is going to be May 25th uh, on their uh, VDOE YouTube channel and that link is also on that page. So do you have any questions? Uh, yes. Yeah, the screen right. So 
math eight, algebra one, geometry, and algebra two, you're saying those will no longer be the course selections. They will now be at whatever it's going essential to be. Essential concepts of one, et cetera. Is. So they're going to, you're, so I guess you've got four courses there, what I would consider math eight being mm -hmm. a slower learner. Like a pre-algebra. Yeah. Mm -hmm. And then an algebra one. I guess somewhere you got to blend those together and you're going to reduce course there, uh, there is a lot of overlap, particularly in your algebras and then the math eight. Uh, because of those concepts. You do have a lot of al uh, overlap with Algebra 1 and Algebra 2. So I don't think we're going to be missing out on any of that, con that content uh, because it is repeated and repeated uh, over and over. And, and again, since we have the leeway to, be making, to, to allow students to go as fast or slowly as they need to through those courses, I think we'll be able to, to get the material across to them at the appropriate time. So I see the examples there of the pathways of one-year advanced students. Do we have students that are, are maybe two years advanced? Yes, or, we or do. Three years I just took a middle-of-the-road situation. Most of our students are in the one-year advanced, actually. And I think the concern, the concern that I've heard from parents is those that are, that are maybe two years advanced or, mm -hmm. or beyond, um, what, what that the, will entail. The two-year advanced students will be getting to calculus BC, or they will be taking two more math classes and options if they wanted to. So we will have a pathway for a two-year advanced student, just like we do now. Thank you. Mr. Chairman, could I just add one thing? First of all, I just want to thank Ms. Hartley for the presentation. I don't, I don't, we don't always uh, invite Ms. Hartley to do mathematical you know, presentations at our board <laughs> meetings, so you may not be as familiar I with I don't her. know why. <laughs> <laughs> because it's somewhere like up yeah. here. Well, I, want to, I want to embarrass her for a moment, and with your permission, uh, and you can throw things at me later, but uh, Ms. Hartley, before taking on this role as, as math supervisor, and she, she truly is an expert in this field, and we appreciate so much her leadership, but she was, of course, prior to that, one of our expert mathematics teachers in the classroom. But if you don't mind, I'm just, I just love this about you. Do you mind sharing what you did in your previous life? <laughs> oh, brother. <laughs> I, I, was, I didn't know where you were going with this. Uh, before I became a teacher, I uh, was a career switcher. I entered the, the profession later. I was a, an Air Force pilot, and I flew KC-135s. Nice. Nice. Very few nice. airplanes, yeah. So, and you need math. <laughs> you <laughs> you need math you for that. Need Harley, how long have you been with us? Uh, in, the, in our division, 16 years. Okay, all right. Yeah. So did you... You may have come over around the same well, you know, after my, my high school history teacher was retired from the Air Force, uh, Mr. Welch, over at Northside. So, oh, okay. Um, he was a pilot. Um, so it was a lot Very of career good. switchers, but no, appreciate your service. And I, I think this is, I think this is helpful. As with anything, there seems to be so much misinformation, and you know, I think this all started with a misinformed school board member in, in Northern Virginia, and then it was yes. picked up by an unnamed website who, you know, people cling, to, you know, clung on to that. And, we you thought know. you were going to name somebody here. Yeah, <laughs> yeah, that's right. um, yeah so, so, yeah, I mean, it's, 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 it's uh, I think it's definitely helpful. I mean, I, th I think some of it's still to be determined because they haven't really, right. I mean, you know, but at the end of the day, you know, local control is is, is key. You know, mm -hmm. my hope is if they're really revamping this, that they're going to help us when it comes time to replace all these textbooks. So, um, exactly. which exactly. we know that's not going to happen. But anyway, um, <laughs> so thank you so much. You're Good welcome. Talk. Thank you very much. Thank you. Good talk. All right. Uh, item 11.01 .01, report by uh, um, superintendent. Thank you, Mr. Chairman. Just briefly, um, I just I can't help but um, uh, be here this evening and think about, of course, with, without saying what a tough year that this has been. But despite that, uh, it's been amazing to watch this evening the 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 recognitions that we did and just the well-roundedness of it. Just so, so just imagine we recognized this evening a a state teacher of the year, uh, a pair of teachers who have been published in in, in national journals on on our behalf and. Um, we recognized uh, state science fair engineering winners uh, from among our students. We recognized um, champion student athletes and, of course, our hero nurses. And I, I just think the well-rounded nature of just all those accomplishments just says so much in terms of uh, despite the challenges, 
what our staff and our students um, not only are capable of, but actually have accomplished this year. And that's just it's just amazing. Last week, of course, was uh, a teacher appreciation week. And uh, again, we want to thank our teachers and recognize them for all that they uh, do and have done. But also thank you to our school board for your efforts in recognizing them last week. And then, of course, we're mindful that we did start our state testing this week. Um, we're, we're keeping a very uh, careful balance on that in terms of not putting pressure on folks in terms of performance. But these will be you know, serve as, uh, as some benchmark uh, data in terms of how our students are doing. And then finally, uh, just been, it's been a joy so far. We're, and last evening, uh, we were over at William Byrd High School. Uh, got to uh, have uh, be with Mr. Greenway there, but to recognize our, our honor graduates uh, there. Next week, I know at, where I was invited to Hidden Valley High School, so we'll be there for an event. But just so proud of all these students at the various schools, and thanks to the schools for putting on these events. For our seniors, just think about where we were this time last year. Just grateful to be able to do this. And of course, once again, two weeks, we'll have graduation ceremony. So looking forward to that and still praying for good weather. Thank you. Absolutely. All right. Reports and inquiries of board members. So. Thank you, Mr. Chairman. I, I wanted to share um, something that I was able to do uh, this week that um, reminds me why I, I'm, I served on the school board. And when I leave the board, It'll be one of those things that I look back on and, and with, with a lot of fondness. Um, I, I had an opportunity to visit uh, Glen Cove uh, Elementary School this week. I was invited there by uh, a Mr. Daniel Donahue, who's a first grade teacher at, uh, at that school. And they had an event, um, some, the first, although there are four first grade classes there, they had an event called uh, Community Helpers where they invited people who um, worked in the community uh, to come in and talk to the kids about what, what, they, what they did. And so he um, invited me as a school board representative. Um, uh, it's a compliment to say that I was a community helper, but he invited me there. And uh, what was really wonderful about this is these are first graders, right? So uh, Mr. Donahue showed, let them uh, watch a, a, a bit of a school board meeting. Just, he sort of pre-taught them. He prepped them for what, what you know, for my, my arrival. So he, he showed them what a school board meeting was, um, got to see what school board members are, and then he asked them to write questions. And so um, I stood at the front of the class and uh, he read uh, me their questions. And the, the first thing is I walked into the room and one of the kids just raised his hand and said, hi, Mr. Butzer. Now, I never met that kid in my life, but he, he knew how I was. They were all so happy and so smiling and so interesting, but their questions were, were really special. And so uh, what I tried to explain, they asked me uh, what I did, so I tried to explain uh, as best I could at that level what school board members do, I basically said that uh, we kind of write rules and that we talked about what some of those rules were. And um, one of the things that uh, I explained to them that it's we write rules uh, to keep you safe. Um, we write rules to help we help feed you, and um, we also um, try and get money to help fund great teachers like you have and other things, but I, the, the story I wanted to tell you is that I talked about having a new school. Well, obviously, that's a school that needs to be uh, redone. So I started to talk to uh, the kids about building a new school, and one of the kids raised their hands, and, and he was worried that we weren't going to take his teacher to the new building. <laughs> exactly. So on his little his level, he's thinking brand new building because I explained what we were going to do. We were going to build a new building, keep the old building. You could stay there until we build a new one. We go into this new building, and he was worried about keeping his teacher because he loved that teacher so much. But um, every one of those kids, they were so well behaved, so happy. Every one of them wore a mask. Every one of these first graders had a mask on. Um, it just... I actually got a little emotional after the thing because that's the best part of this job um, is, is walking through those elementary schools and seeing what it is that we're responsible for taking care of. So I, that, that's all. Thank you. All right. 
Mr. Linden? Yes, thank you, Mr. Chairman. I uh, just wanted to take an opportunity to, to thank Mr. Lowe for his presentation the other night at, uh, at our joint meeting with the Board of Supervisors. He was able to make so many excellent points to, uh, to the Board and for those people that may have watched on RVTV um, about the needs that we have over at, at Glen Cove and, and Cundiff along with Burton. And it seems like the buy-in, the initial buy-in that, uh, that the Board of Supervisors has, has led us to believe we have is, is exciting for BCAT and, uh, and potentially Glen Cove and Cundiff to get on, on, the, uh, on the front burner, so to speak. So I know there's a, still a lot of work to be done to that, but I wanted to thank the Board of Supervisors and Chris. I thought the, the presentation that you gave really helped hammer home that point that that we are in a need for those schools. It's not a want, it's it's a need. So well done. Yes, thank you, Mr. Chairman. Uh, so Dr. Nicely and I did have the opportunity last night to go to the Honors Banquet at, at William Bird and that's just a, an amazing event, I'm sure, at every, every high school. Um, but it gives you the First off, as Dr. Nicely said, it was nice that we were able to meet. We had it in the gymnasium. They had you know, food in the cafeteria and served the folks. And uh, it, it was just nice to have some bit of normalcy in the school. But then we had that presentation. And you see those amazing students and kids and getting awards. And uh, I, I, I kidded. Uh, I think I may have even told Dr. Nicely. Or I told someone there, I said, the only way I ever got to go to an honors bank was to be a school board member. They, they never invited. They never invited me when I was in school. I don't, I don't know why, but um, it, it was a, it was truly an honor and uh, some amazing. The little girl that was here, uh, uh, her name, Mullen. Mullen, yeah, Natalie Mullins, was uh, uh, honored as the best all around student, and you can see she's in the SAC, SAC. and uh, just phenomenal student. So uh, th that was wonderful, and 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 to uh, Mr. Linden's point with Mr. Lowe, I even mentioned to uh, Dr. Nicely this week, uh, you did you, you did a wonderful, you're doing a wonderful job. You did a, a nice presentation. We appreciate your your help, and a lot of <coughs> what your presentations are doing are hammering home the need, and, and um, you know how we can move this forward. Uh, we're not going to let up on getting uh, a new BCAT for the citizens of Roanoke County. Um, we should have corrected uh, Cundiff and Glen Cove years ago. We're not going to let up on that. We've got to bring all that forward. And we thank you for your presentations. So, uh, you know, looking forward to graduation uh, in a couple weeks. And it's uh, amazing that we're hopefully putting this mess behind us and we can move forward, hopefully, in the new year. So, thank you, Mr. Chairman. Yes, Mr. Chairman. That's right. Thank you, Mr. Chairman. Um, one other thing that happened at Glen Cove. Oh, this <laughs> I forgot that story. <laughs> and uh, uh, there was this little first grader <laughs> came in, is waving his hand. Thought thought he had a question. He said, "My granddaddy's on the school board." Aww. Yeah, right. And that was my actually. Grand he said. He said. Do you know who I am? He asked me if I knew who he was. I said, no, young man, I don't know. Well, my granddaddy is Mike, Mr. Mike Ray. <laughs> and I said, well, then you tell your grandfather to get you a new school. <laughs> Isn't that what Mr. Ray says? Do you know who I am? <laughs> I did not prep him for that either. He's a character. But anyway, but he's that a, was great. He's a cutie. But uh, uh, just also, Mr. Lowe, I want to congratulate you, as other people have. It's It's really... You are, it's just amazing on the things that you're on top of. And I think it it really shows the experience you've had over the years, whether it's on the Board of Supervisors, I mean on the, on the other side of the fence, or this one. And I think that, uh, you know, we we've, I feel very confident when we go into a meeting and you give a presentation. And uh, I know that uh, you have the answers. And you're ready, and I really appreciate the thoroughness that you're doing. So thank Definitely. you, Mr. Yep. Uh, enjoyed teacher appreciation week last week. I got around to the schools and popped into every room and thanked the teachers. Uh, great conversations, great uh, energy. 
I mean, it's just amazing what the energy these teachers have and the way they are really getting the most out of these students. And uh, I'm just so impressed and, and humbled and honored to be part of it with them. And, uh, so I really appreciate um, getting around. We got around to all the schools and the classrooms. Thank you, Dr. Nicely, for attending with me. Um, of course, graduation is coming up. We're looking forward to that. And uh, we're able to do it a lot in person this year, which is great. And I think that's quite a testament, I think, to everyone and Dr. Nicely and all the board members that have coordinated this uh, process through a SAFE and were able to, uh, to uh, have it in person this year. Um, I have, Dr. Nicely, I spoke with uh, Mr. Spangler, but I'd like to have an open house at K-Spring. We need that. And we can do it safely and uh, he's already making some plans maybe August we don't know but uh, we really need to uh, if you'll sort of find out about that and we'll try to get that going because we need to show the citizens and what what we're doing with our tax dollars and how we're continuing to improve these school systems that have been deteriorating for so many years. So uh, we'd like, I'd like to get that done pretty quickly. So. That's all. Thank you. Well, thank you, Mr. Yeah. Um, yeah, I'll just follow up, uh, you, know, uh, you know, with our joint meeting with the Board of Supervisors. Uh, we've, you know, due to COVID and, you know, some other reasons, we, we really haven't had a haven't had a face-to-face -face meeting in a while and you know the ones in the past quite honestly have really just you know uh, lack of a better term been some pomp and circumstances we both presented you know both sides presented powerpoints to talk about how great each of them we were all doing and it was really never a lot of dialogue and I, and I will say um, you know I left that meeting and yeah, I don't want to speak for everyone but I would say that's probably the most constructive meeting we've had with the Board of Supervisors. It was, a, you know, a lot of give and take, a lot of a lot of back and forth, some, you know, some good questions asked. And, um, uh, you know, we, I think we both, there's no doubt we both came out of there with, the, you know, with the, at least the, I think the Board of Supervisors firmly knows we need to do BCAT and, you know, and, and I think they're going, you know, I feel like they're going to do do their part in, in finding the funding for that. Um, you know, we got a lot of work ahead. You know, we need to get the community involved. Uh, you know, just as an update, Mr. Ray and I are, you know, going to be sitting down with uh, you know, Mr. Peters and Mr. North next week to kind of iron out some next steps. But, uh, you know, it is, it, we are moving forward. I think it's pretty exciting. Um, you know, if we can get BCAT out of the way, that speeds up the timeline for those, for Clundiff and Glen Cove, which are so overdue. Um, uh, so, you know, as we've all said before, I mean, we, you know, neither boards can control what happened in the past or with previous boards, but, you know, um, you know, with us five up here, I know that, you know, we're doing everything we can to advance these projects. So, uh, you know, stay tuned, keep updated. I've, uh, uh, you know, hopefully there'll be something in the paper in the next, uh, three to four days about that, uh, about that meeting we've been told just to give the citizens an update. So thank you. Appreciate y'all coming out. Appreciate all you do. Meeting adjourned.